Thank you, Kevin. Um, everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good morning. I hope everybody had a chance to get their coffee. Good morning. And um, I'm just going to pull this back up on the screen here. It locked me out. Give me a second to pull it up. All right. Looking good. Um, it's wonderful to see your faces this morning. And uh, it's an honor to be here. So I'm a appraiser with LA County Assessor's Office and I'm going to be showing you our assessor portal that you can access online. So before we dive in, how many of you were familiar with our old green screens? You had the black background with a bright green font and you'd enter one screen at a time to get one piece of the puzzle, have to go to the next screen, deciphering all the codes and keys. Well, at any rate, enter the new assessor portal which is a more modern, user-friendly, and intuitive environment with the same old property information that's just a whole lot easier to look at. So you're gonna see, um, if, you, if you have any trouble seeing what I'm displaying on the screen, you got your smartphones with you, feel free to follow along with me. And if you just Google LA County Assessor Portal, it's usually the top search result. And there's a URL that says portal.assessor dot LA County dot G O V. It's portal P O R T A L dot assessor A S S E S S O R dot LA County dot G O V. I know it's a little bit hard to see from where you are. So feel free to follow along with me. You'll see this great picture of our assessor on the home page. And in the blue header, up here right above his picture, we have a few helpful links. The first one is Map Search. It has some great functionality that I'm hoping to show you the very end that I think you would find very, very useful. And there you can search by assessor ID number, address, cross streets, and even some business names to find your property on a map. The second link over here is PAIS, which is Property Assessment Information System, and that goes to another LA County website, which has some extensive map layers and functionality. And the third link over here is the Assessor Internet, and that goes to our main Assessor Public website, which opens in a separate tab or window. And from our main homepage, you have three different ways, or three different tabs here, where you can search. The first one, right underneath our assessor's picture, is basic search. And that allows you to search by assessor's ID number or CITUS address. The next option is according to assessment legal description. And the third option is, once again, map search. And that's the exact same functionality as in the header above. And by the way, if you were to use a map search to find your property on a map, um, the difference between basic search and map search also is that whatever information you enter in basic search is just limited to the, to the assessor's database. But if you put in an address in map search, you'll have access to over a million more different addresses because it's accessing a separate address database. So we're just going to search by AIN to keep it simple. I'm going to go back to basic search. And if you wanted to follow along, I'm going to enter in 8709-012-046. And when, so once you enter in your search criteria, you're going to see. Usually you don't see this little login page. It's kind of a a little bug that I'm getting here. Let me see if I can get rid of that. There we go, much better. You're gonna see this property details page. And at any point you want to return to our main home screen where you have all the different search options, you just click on the county logo in the top left corner. That returns you to the home page. So you see that this page is divided into different sections that we also refer to as accordions because they're collapsible and expandable. The first section is called the summary section, and that's basically like a snapshot 
kind of like a newspaper fold of all of your most critical property information. So you're going to see the situs address, the use type, you'll see that this property is a single family residence and it's an active parcel rather than a deleted one. And we have a building and land overview and you'll notice um, that if you hover over the different sections, almost every label, code, and key that you hover on provides you with a tool tip that gives you a more detailed description of what it is. But if you're using your smartphone, it is a little more challenging to see some of those tool tips. So it is most user friendly on um, your PC, but we made it um, compatible for mobile devices as well. So your cell phone, tablets, um, wherever you are on the go. So in the building land overview, that's within the summary section, we're just going to give you an overview of the first subpart. So if your property has multiple subparts, you're just going to see the details of the first one here and then break down a little bit further down. So you see the bedroom and bathroom count. This is five bedrooms, seven bathrooms, 7,467 square feet. It gives you the land square footage, year built, effective year. We've got a link over here to the assessor parcel map as well as a map index. And then we have some different property values listed here for this specific property, followed by the assessor's responsible division. So if you're looking up a particular property on our website and you have questions or concerns about it and you want to contact our office to find out more, this is where you would look to find out which division within our office is responsible for that property and what number you would call. So this particular property is assigned to our East District office. And over here is the phone number that you would call to get more information. And depending on what screen size you're using, you're going to either see the Google Street View and the maps to the right, or it's going to be rolling underneath if you're on a smaller screen. So we have our Google Street View here, a lovely property. And these little icons over here, you can toggle back and forth between the Google Street View and what's called pictometry. Pictometry, what's the phone number? I'm sorry? The phone, number? the phone number for this particular property to the East District? Oh, no, just to get Oh, our main office phone number um, to our headquarters. Let's see. Do you know that off the top of your head, Carol? I just look the executive office number, but not the general public service number. Isn't it nine seven four three two one one? Let's see. I'm just going to open up a separate tab here. That's all right. No worries. No worries. Actually, if I go to the assessor internet. Yeah, so I'm not quite as familiar with this particular <laughs> And so our main phone number is 213-974-3211. And if you prefer toll-free, it's 888 807-2111. And if you didn't quite have enough time to write that all down, if you go to the website that we're presenting on right now, there's a link in the top right corner that says Assessor Internet. From there, you would go to contact us and it lists all our different phone numbers. And so underneath the Google Street View, we have a smaller interactive map. And it just gives you kind of a, a general idea of the overall location where your property is, as indicated by the red pinpoint. And there, it's interactive, so you can actually zoom in and out. You can pan around to see the area. You can even select specific map layers. And so, for example, by default, we've selected the assessor parcels layer for you. So if you zoom in far enough, you can actually see the assessor ID numbers. I know it's a little bit hard to make out from this distance. We also have communities, cities, zip codes, school districts, um, so on and so forth. So I'll let you kind of check that out at your leader so you can see the rest of what we have here. The next main section is called building and land characteristics. And that's, this is where you're going to see the very specific breakdown of the property. So it starts off with your land information. 
It'll give you the square footage, whether it's on a corner lot or not, golf front, if it's right by a freeway, flight path, if there's any particular view that we have on file, the zoning, with a use code spelled out on the right, so we can see that this is for a single family residence. And then a repeat of the situs address, as well as the assessment legal description, followed by the detailed building information. And so, of course, you see once again that this is five bedrooms, seven bathrooms. You see the square footage. You're built in effective year with a design type spelled out for you on the right. You don't have to try to figure out how to decipher all the codes and keys because it's spelled out for you here. And if there are multiple subparts, this is where you would find all the details of each and every subpart associated with that property. And then you would see a brief summary of it down here at the bottom under where it says summary and kind of gold lettering. And quality class is the last little section we have under building and land. And basically, this is how we classify a property. Um, so from a basic kind of cookie cutter D7 to uh, a D14 luxury residence, if you expand this little box here, let me scroll back down, it gives you a whole lot more information if you want to see how we classify a property. I'm going to collapse that again and move on to our next section. Events history. You see under events history, we actually have two different tabs. By default, it's going to show you the ownership tab. And you might think, oh, ownership history, this is where I can see the owner's name. Well, no. Um, by law, we can't display the owner's name on the public website. But we do give you the different recording dates. So if you want to know the date when a property sold and transferred ownership, this is where you would find it and whether or not it was a reassessable event, and then the assessed value associated with that event. <clears throat> Just to the right of the ownership tab, we have parcel change. And you probably won't use this very often, um, but you could find it very helpful. So if the particular property you're looking at used to be on a different size lot, it used to be a bigger lot or a smaller lot, and it was either combined with other parcels or part of it was taken to, um, to be used for street purposes or whatnot, this is where you would find that history of the old parcel ID numbers as well as the new parcel ID numbers and what date it changed. <laughs> And our last main section here is assessment history. And it's a lot of information, so you're probably going to see things that are just not really relevant to you, but there are a lot of codes and keys that we use to process our work in our office. We decided it was a better idea to give more information or too much information as opposed to not enough. So if you do have questions about something, once again, you can hover to see all the codes and keys and what they mean. The tool tips will pop up for you. The assessment history section is basically a year-by-year -year account of all of our different role values, with the most recent on top, as well as any changes in value that were associated with a change of ownership or new construction. So for example, if you look over here, it says 219 PSEG. PSEG is just kind of our, our lingo for um, the role that's being prepared. So these are the values that we anticipate for 2019, followed by the values that have already been established for 2018, 17, and so on. So you'll see that we have the value totaled up for you over here. And we also have a breakdown of the land value and the improvement value if you want to see how much we've assigned for each one, and the base year. So you probably notice that by default we show the first 10 rows, but if you prefer to see all of them in one long list instead of having to paginate at the very bottom, because you see there are one, two, three different pages, we have this handy little checkbox here that says show all. If you click on that, it shows it as one long list that you can scroll up and down if you just prefer to do that as opposed to paginating back and forth. 
And also notice that in a lot of our tables that we have within the assessor portal, there are little plus signs next to the rows. If you see those plus signs, it means you can expand it to see even more information. So for the most part in the expanded sections, it's just a translation. It spells everything else out as opposed to having to hover over the different codes and keys to see what they mean. So if you want to know what R is for bill type, it just spells it out here. It means it's a regular roll bill. So there, it wasn't a transfer, a change in ownership. It wasn't new construction. It's just a regular roll bill. And you'll see a whole lot more information in the expanded section along with the different value types that are associated with that particular segment. And then down in the footer here, let's see how we're we doing time, we're doing all right? Okay, great. Because I wanna get to the map to the very end. I think you're gonna find those very, very useful. So in the footer, we also have contact us, disclaimers, and some FAQs if you have more questions about our website. And also where it says PDB effective date, that probably sounds like a foreign language to most of you, that basically means the last time our system is, was updated. So we do update it on a weekly basis. And you'll see here that the date is April 7th. And so it's, that was, let's see, Sunday. So typically every Sunday is when we refresh the data and you will see an update the following Monday. Monday or Tuesday, the very latest. And then lastly in the footer, if you wanna connect with us via social media, please do so. We have Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and our Assessor YouTube channel. Okay, how about checking out some of those maps? I'm gonna click on the link in the header that says Map Search, and if you're following along on your smartphone, it's gonna be in that little menu icon. So if you click on the menu icon, you'll see Map Search. And hopefully you won't get this little annoying pop-up. But once you click on map search, it gives you a full size map of LA County. And you can use these little buttons in the top left to zoom in or out. And you can click and drag to kind of pan around the area. So if you know the general idea of where your property is located and you just want to see like an, kind of an overhead view of the footprint of the property, this map comes in really handy for that. We also have Underneath the plus and minus sign to zoom in and out, we have what's called a locator icon. So if you're out in the field and you're looking at a property and you wanna kind of be able to see um, the assessor's ID number from where you are, you can click on this locator icon. And it's not exactly 100% accurate, but it is pretty good about finding out where you are. And then you can kind of play with our map from there. It'll zoom to where you are and, uh, and check out the map from there. So, if you notice, this has its own search bar on the map. This is where I was saying earlier, you have access to over a million more addresses than you would find um, as opposed to our basic search, um, search bar. Because this access is a different database to find the addresses. So you can use a regular AIN, or you could put in a specific address, so if I started typing in, for example, our headquarters, it would begin to give you suggestions and you can click on one of the suggestions that pops up from there or you can finish entering in the address. And since we're off of San Gabriel and Valley Boulevard, I'm just putting in San Gabriel and Valley. You don't have to be that specific, which is really nice. I'm going to press enter, and it gives you the little green locator icon to show you the intersection of San Gabriel Boulevard and Valley Boulevard. And from there, you wanted to kind of click and drag to see, oh, okay, here's where we are. It's really, really handy, and it shows you all the different assessor ID numbers and has the same layers as we saw in that interactive map. So if you wanted to see the aerial imagery from 2013, 
You can click that layer and go all the way back to 2008. Unfortunately, that's as far back as we go. We are hoping to have uh, more recent layers available soon. And under the reference layers, of course, you can also see the assessor parcels. You would just click on each layer but kind of toggle it off and on. Cities, communities, zip codes. I know some areas, um, school districts, makes a very, very big difference in the price of a property. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to selecting the street view. And school districts and if you don't see your particular layer rendering you just zoom in or out a little bit and now you can see the black outline here for the school districts it might come in really handy for you. Yes, how, how accurate is that we can rely on that no we have found a few discrepancies um, last I heard we did clear them up but if you find some discrepancies there in the map layers, we definitely encourage you to use this to contact us and let us know. Um, we actually pull this information from, um, I wanna say it might be uh, regional planning, but from a set, an outside source. So if we don't have the jurisdiction to go and fix it ourselves. We have to contact our outside source to say, hey, we're getting reports that this particular layer may not be 100% accurate, you're just a few parcels off on this school district layer or whatnot, can you update that, research it, look into it, fix it, let us know when it's done. Um, so we don't have jurisdiction, we pull it in and it should be updated. I, I can't tell you how often it is, but it should be very, very accurate. We have had a lot of good feedback about it being very, very useful. So I definitely encourage you to check it out and find out a little bit more. And then lastly, you might find that our recent sales layer comes in very handy for you. And it's already selected by default. So if you're wondering why you can't see it, you just need to zoom in a little bit more. And then you see all the different color coding. So you see the gold and the different shades of blue. And you might be wondering, well, how do I, what does that mean? In the bottom right corner, we have the legend. The legend is specifically for the recent sales. And when I say recent sales, that's Properties that have sold within the last two years. So if you want to find out a little bit more about all the details, I know we not, might not have enough time to go into it right now, but we do have more information under our FAQs about even the recent sales layer. So I encourage you to check that out. But if you click on the legend to pop it up, it will decipher all the different color coding for you and what it means. And also, if you want to find out just some very brief information about that property, so you're like, okay, what is this one? It's highlighted in kind of the gold color here. Just click on it. Let me drag it down a little bit. And it gives you the AIN. What the use type is, we see it's residential, two units. We have the situs address here. And you can either click on the little X to close that and keep looking and exploring around on the map. Or you can select get parcel detail. And that will take you to the property details page for that particular property. So we have some very robust features and functionality in that map search that we definitely would encourage you to check out. And with that, um, that is kind of an overview of everything that I have. I was hoping it would be most pertinent to you. So should we open up for any yeah, questions? We have one question in the back. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, a comment also, I, I noticed you have the color coding that's really cool so you can see if it's unincorporated or what city it's in. But um, your old map system, it shows the not only the site address but the common or mailing addresses. Is there a way to, on this map to see all those common addresses again? Is there a layer change? Or? Uh, when you say our old system, was it perhaps the PAIS? Yeah. Okay. And that we actually have accessible right here in the link. In the header and this is where you can open up and find that information so you would have to go to that website to see that specific information we don't have it on our own uh, map search within the portal itself you'd have to go to the outside link and check it out on the PIIS so we try to make that handy and keep it handy for you in the, um, the header link so you didn't have to go out of our system to link to it 
Yes, sir. What, what, you, want, what, what, what you want between uh, EMQ and uh, effective gear? I'm sorry, can you say what? Oh, the year, the year built? built? Uh, effective gear. Where do you find that? Huh? I think he's what asking what is the, the difference. difference. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's go back to that here. Now, what is an uh, effective gear? Okay. So year built was the, the year that the property was originally built in the very, very beginning. The effective year, if you see a difference, the effective year should either be the same as the year built or a more recent year. So if it's a more, you see a more recent year, that means they've done some kind of improvements to the property. They've either added on to it or they've done some very significant remodeling. So it would effectively make it more comparable to a newer property. So the effective year for this one is 1965, even though it was built in 1956. So because of its 1965 effective year, that would make it more comparable to a property that was built in 1965 because of the additions or the remodeling that had been done to that particular property. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm just curious about this uh, kind of case. Lady, so, so many fire destroyed the houses, and then after the insurance company pay for the rebuild the property, how do you uh, figure out the property tax? Go by the old value or the new value? Um, we actually have districts. What they want to do is contact their district office <coughs> Because to be honest, I haven't specifically worked on a property. Do you want to answer that, Kat? Yeah. Okay, so if your property is been destroyed by a disaster, you have 12 months from the date of damage to file a, a form called a misfortune and calamity claim form. So you fill that out, send it to the assessor's office. We will update the information and give credit for the property that's been destroyed. And then when the property has been rebuilt, if it's keeping the same footprint and basically the restoring the same amenities and all that, we will restore the trend at Prop 13 value. So it's not going to get reassessed to a fair market value as a brand new house. We're going to restore that, the trend at Prop 13 for the improvement value. But if they don't file that misfortune and calamity claim form and we don't know that the property was destroyed in a disaster or in a fire and they rebuild, it will be treated as new construction. So it's very important if the property has been damaged or destroyed by disaster that they file the misfortune and calamity claim form. We have 12 months from the date of damage. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Does your system allow us to help with a buyer if they're buying a new property and try to calculate supplemental tax? Do you have a way to help us figure out how to? create a number for them to assess, okay, it's going to be another 3,000 because they wouldn't have, otherwise you know what that number would have been based on the we actually don't have that on this particular website. Um, is that on the, it's on the internet? Okay, the main website. On the main website. So, where you put the and the projected prices, projected sale date. Is that, uh, is it's on the internet. Every tax assessor, every county tax assessor website should have a tax assessor, a supplemental tax assessor. It's also an all property. So it's on. It's on the. It's on the internet. I can point it out to you. So it's right. Assessor. It's on. We'll try to call the page. <laughs> Everybody saw how we got there. There's many places. <laughs> if you're on the portal that we were just uh, presenting to you, in the top right there's an assessor internet link. If you click on there, it will take you to our main assessor website and under the homeowners tab, this is one of the areas where you can find the supplemental tax estimator. <coughs> and find the information you were talking about. We have one more question. Yes, ma'am. Um, for, the, for 
the comb exemption and delinquent, uh, property tax delinquent, is that in the same tab for members? I believe so. Let's see, okay. So on the same area here, let's go to exclusions and tax relief. And here's where it talks about grandparent, parent, child transfers. This is what you're talking about. Right? Seven thousand home exemption. Oh, the home is okay. Seven thousand. So, I believe it's this one. This first one says homeowners. Let's see. Yes. There we go. Oh yeah. Well, that would be on our portal. Yes. If you want to see if you have it or not, you go here and it doesn't look like this one has it. Let me try to find one that does. You would see it there okay. under home box. So if they had it, it would be there. And that's where you can always find it. And the delinquent? Should be at the top. It was, yes. <laughs> So you see right here it says tax status current. If it was delinquent, it would be in red and say delinquent. You're very welcome. All right. Thank you. Oh, do we have mm -hmm. Comparable? Um, we don't have any place, at least not on the portal, that provides you with comparable sales. The best that you can do is if you go to our map search where we were earlier, and if you know the, the general area of where you need to find properties. So we put in the AIN that we were looking at earlier. You would use that recent sales layer to kind of see other properties within that area that have sold lately or within the last two years. And you can just click on them to see what they are. So you see this one is a, a single residential property. She can also go to PAIS to go to the recent sales. Okay. And then it'll list the APNs and all that. PAIS, yeah, I have explored that one a whole lot. So find property by address or by AIN, what your AIN was that you were using? So did you catch that through the, the PAIS system? Are you familiar with the PAIS at all? Okay, so that's another link that we have within the assessor portal. It's in the blue header, the middle one that says PAIS. If you click on that one, it takes you to this outside LA County website. And right here where it says find a property, you click on by address. Right, Karen? Um, why don't you just use the AIN that you were using? Okay. And then you just put it up in. Just click, just click on my sister AIN. Okay. Yeah, click that. And then put the AIN. And then scroll down a little bit. And um, click search for recent sales. And then you scroll further down, you see all the various sales corresponding to the radius that you select. And then if you expand the radius, you'll see more. So right now it's set to find sales within 500 feet. So you can expand it to all the way up to one whole mile. Thank you, Karen. <coughs> Thank you everybody for your time. Have a great day.